What's up, brother? It's your boy, Mike Muse. Welcome to the episode of the Mike Muse Show. I, I'm so excited to be in conversation with my next guest. And always, I think you can always hear my smile. If you are listening to us right now in your car, you're driving, you're at the crib, you're barbecuing, you're cooking. Uh, but if you're watching us on YouTube, you know I'm smiling really hard right now. That means I really do like my guest. You guys I always give it away. Um, but this man, this guest is special to me. Uh, you guys all know him as like this incredible, dope, talented uh, former NFL linebacker, uh, but what you guys don't know, or maybe some of you do, um, is how much Dahani Jones is so much of a renaissance man. Um, I had a chance to meet Dahani Jones. It was uh, orientation before we began University of Michigan. He hadn't really started his football training camp. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Uh, but I know we shared an orientation group together and our dorm rooms were right across from each other. Um, so I had the chance to really get to know Dahani Jones before the world knew him as this incredible Michigan man. Um, but one thing that always stood out to me about Dahani, about all the other things, aside from his great athletic prowess, um, was how well-rounded he was. Yeah, he was literally my first introduction to showing what a high-performing athlete could push the bounds and barriers on. I mean, this brother was literally in my organic chemistry class. I'm an engineering student, and, and you know, the no South shade any football players or college athletes, but a D1 schools like that, football players ain't really taking orgo. <laughs> and so, and, and Jahadi sat in the front row and he sat in the front row and he would raise questions. And I was, I was in awe of that. I was like, this dude does not have to be in here. Like he's about to go off and make millions of dollars. Why is he struggling in orgo with me? So I could get a $50,000 salary. Gonna cut you. I'm gonna to cut get you right there. <laughs> I, first of all, first of all, we, we all struggled together, all right? We all struggled together in that organic yeah. chemistry class. And I think we had like a great time. That, that to be honest, was like one of the best <laughs> classes that I think we had. And our teacher, she was talking about how she rode a motorcycle. You know, she had <laughs> tattoos up and down her arms. And it's like, you know, like a college kid, you know, coming to organic chemistry and then you play football. And then all of a sudden your teacher is just like tatted up, like motorcycle riding, like amazing woman. <laughs> and and uh, you know, it's kind of just like, that's the whole point of college is to be able to find and to be able to interact with people that you may not have ever met in your life and that's like that melting pot and like yeah. you learn about me but i learned about you you know mm. from the team you know all of us <laughs> it's like elevated up and down you know like, you know, like, and like all, all, all that you know, like i learned the, the detroit the detroit way and you taught me all that but you also taught me you know you, you also taught me as well as introduced me to so many different people that I would have never met before. And the confluence of that brain power and that curiosity. And oh, by the way, being African American on the University of Michigan's campus, right, where there's not a lot of us, that also yeah. became sort of a point of connectivity between so many of us. And, and by the way, oh, we were all in East Quad at the University of Michigan. And a lot of people don't know about East Quad, but that's the land of the interesting individuals back in the yes. day. And I'm purposely using my quotation marks <laughs> because I want to make sure people know that we were unique with our gifts. <laughs> we were unique, Literally. But we, lo but we loved it. We were the center yeah. of it and we were able to harness everybody together. So I, I love all the great success that you've had um, and all the great things that you've done. You know, we're going to continue. We're going to continue yeah. to build and grow and just diversify, but bring so many people together through conversation. And that's what we're doing. And audience, which makes my heart smile. This is going to be a very heads up, non-traditional Mike News interview, just because I'm, my actually heart is full right now. Because, I mean, to have Dahani Jones on the Mike News show, uh, Dahani probably never saw the sights, what he's doing now and how he pushed himself, what he's doing. I never saw myself ever being in the media space. When I connected with Dahani, I was purely engineering. Um, so the fact that I'm able to interview my brother on literally on my show that I never imagined for myself is just literally mind blowing for me right now. Um, but with that being said, I'm gonna do one more thing that makes Ahani so fascinating before we talk about why he's really here today, was he also uh, was a guest conductor for the Philadelphia Symphony uh, while he was playing with the Eagles. You probably remember that, Ahani, but I remember that about you. And when I well, saw you think, that you, uh, you, think, you think we're gonna forget? Conducting yeah. the Philly Pops? No, no, my. no, no. Meaning, that was, I don't, a I don't know. Dream. That was a lifelong no. dream. People were like, "Wait a minute, lifelong dream to conduct now. the Philadelphia Pops." Yeah, because I love yeah. classical music. Wait, wait, wait. Brother loves classical music. That's right, I do. And Mike, I know you do too, right? Oh, I but, do. Yeah. I mean, it's like 
you gotta get introduced to so many people. We we we've been we've been blessed with so many different opportunities to get to get introduced to these things, and now we gotta go we gotta go do them. You know yeah, I mean? bring other people, and that's that's why I love talking about it. And uh, I, I love I love conducting the the pops. That was that, that was, was a good time. I, I know you did. I know moment. you did. Yo, he had his bow tie. He had his tux on. He was conducting. What I was saying was, you probably didn't remember that. I remember that about you, man. Like, those are highlights for me. I think about the Honey Jones. I think organic chemistry and the Philadelphia pop. <laughs> like, <laughs> forget your incredible athletic prowess, man. But, like, that is, I think about that. that's so unique. We're going to go off track just a little bit, Honey, because audience, you guys always ask me at the time. One of the number one questions I get, uh, whether it's in the morning or whether you're on the Mike show, is about college. Uh, we talk a lot here, uh, Dahani, on the show about the cost of education. Uh, I get a lot of questions, Dahani, about you know the the is the worth is college worth the the debt that you will incur for those who don't get like full scholarships. So we always are having conversations about that. My perspective, Dahani, has always been about college is definitely worth it. Uh, I'm just curious to you, what would your answer be to a parent uh, who's listening right now on whether or not uh, college is worth it? I think what we've learned over the last year is that we all have have to decide what we need to prioritize. Mm -hmm. Think about that, right? We all sat home for a year and really thought about the things that mattered most to us. And I and I answered the question that way because sometimes it really depends. You know, I was just talking to a friend of mine who uh, lives in uh, Switzerland. And do you know in Switzerland, at the high school age, they decide whether you go into vocational school or if you're going to college, right? Or if you go into the, um, you know, directly, directionally into the trades. Now, that's a different system. But what, what's amazing about that is they really start to dive into who the person is. And so to answer your question, flat, flat out, uh, a four-year college, is it uh, one of the most important choices that you make? Absolutely. Is it worth the cost? Absolutely. Are there scholarships out there? Absolutely. Can you find them? If you work hard enough, can you uh, find enough scholarships in order to pay for college? Absolutely. Uh, is it hard to find them? No. But all you have to do is look for them. Now, is college the right thing for everybody? It depends upon the person. Each of us have our own unique gifts and we have to be able to kind of be honest and true and prioritize how we learn and where we learn and where we ultimately want to be. I go back to what I just said, 2020, we learned how to think differently, which ultimately is going to place people in, in different um, unique situations. Um, but if the four-year college, which was awesome for me, is awesome, was awesome for you too, Mike, I think it's phenomenal. I was granted that, that scholarship. Um, but I was already planning, and I hope that other people as well plan too to find the scholarships because you don't necessarily have to pay for it. You just got to find the people that are willing to take you under their under your wing and pay for it for you, right? So it's all about prioritization. It's, it's all about being able to optimize the opportunity and then go full throttle. And no matter what you do. Just lean into it. You may want to be an engineer. You might end up with your own talk show. You never know where you might end up. You might end up on the Philly Pops conducting or playing football. But these are all, all amazing paths that we prioritize and we optimize by leaning in to find our way to like the next level of where we are in our life. Yeah, that's why I brought that up because you were talking a lot about East Quad, you know, our days at University of Michigan and connecting people and meeting newness of people and, and new people. I think that enriches who you are. So for me, college just wasn't about organic chemistry. It was about learning myself and then learning about how I'm interacting with others and then learning different perspectives. Uh, and to your point, Dahai, I totally agree about the whole, you know, when it looks at switching in the vocational schools, I always feel like as long, college may not be for everybody, but as long as that individual know they had a choice to attend. I think right. sometimes how things are framed right now with a lot of our students feel like they don't even have the choice or they can go. So then they opt out mentally and was like, well, college ain't for me, right? Mm -hmm. but, but they never been told that they actually could go. And so as long as it was presented to you and like- out to the parents, everybody's yeah. got a choice. We all got yeah. choices. You know, the only thing that, the only choice that we, the 
the most important choice that we can make is to realize like that we have to make the choice that we can realize that we have that opportunity and a lot of times people don't know that they have that choice but they also have to realize that they have that choice right so that's like one step right before making the decision yeah it th that's it really you have it and that's my only question uh, that's my only pushback i always have to what you're saying is if you have vocational college or vocational school is on the table and then a four university is on the table, just as long as you know that that four university is an option for you and it's available for you and you choose yep. vocation, I'm cool with that. But for so many times, looking for black and brown kids and, and indigenous communities, it, it's almost felt like the four year isn't even a viable mm -hmm. option, right? Mm -hmm. And so I always push back on that conversation. But thank you for going down and saying that, honey, and bringing that part up. That's why I was enjoying the conversation we're having, just to show, like, yo, this is my college day. This is why we're here. Well, I'm going to throw this in there um, yeah. for the BIPOC community that sometimes feels, though, that the four year college is not an opportunity for them. You know, it's also in terms of being able to see successful people that are able to talk about their college experience, because sometimes, sometimes it's, it's the, it's the experience and the stories that we tell about what we went through in college that get people to be motivated to choose that direction. If that opportunity presents itself, which everybody has the opportunity to do so if they work hard enough and they search for it, right, but we need to see. I mean, to be able to understand and be able to hear from people like yourself and, and Sway and, and, and other people that, that you and I both know that are out there that are doing different things and talk about. And oh, by the way, other people that have had vocational experiences and talk about that as well, right? That's the yeah. great thing about media is to be able to tell those stories so that people can self-identify and say, you know yeah. what, I, I, I remember the life that I lived and it was very similar to the life that that Mike Muse is living, and I can take that directional track and find myself in the same situation. Or maybe it's a completely yeah. different one. It is, but I think that is why it's a great warm up for our conversation about why you're here today. Uh, Leija Madahani is here today. He has partnered uh, with Gatorade Endurance. Uh, Gatorade has done a research study um, to really look at why. Uh, minorities, people of color, uh, those from the disabled community uh, may not be engaging in endurance, uh, endurance sports. Um, and something that really stood out to me while looking at the survey was really about not feeling comfortable in the space because there aren't others who look like them, right? And far too often, I know I felt that way, sometimes University of Michigan, I would walk into a big lecture hall and I'll be the only black person in the sea of maybe like 200 or 300 white people. And the uncomfortability that I felt, not because I'm uncomfortable around white people, uh, but it was just it was just such a new like, yo, I am the only one here, right? And so there is this unsettling feeling. And I had never really thought about that from an endurance sports perspective. You know, I'm not the most athletic guy, but you know, I do work out, I go to the gym. Um, so these are things that I'm used to doing, but I never thought about how how the the lack there of people who look like you may impact why you participating. The, the, why was it important for Gatorade to really, what was the muse behind this research, right? Like, I, I feel like it, it's valuable and it's needed, but it's one of those things like, damn, I didn't even know how valuable and needed this piece of information was. So I, I was curious, like, what would be the muse behind it? Yeah, so um, it, it dovetails so nicely because it goes down the route of being able to identify someone that looks like you. And I, I, I did a, I did a show with Gatorade Endurance and it was called someone like me, right? Because in the endurance world, um, you know, there aren't a lot of people that look like me. And so it discourages you because you, you don't see your reflection in the sport that you hope to or wish to try. And so, you know, we wanted to extend that series. And so Gatorade Endurance actually did a survey and it was to identify and understand the barriers, right? That minority athletes face when considering participation in endurance sports. And so that, that survey drove a narrative and a conversation to be able to figure out, okay, well, well how, how, come, you know, how come you don't wanna participate? Is it just about someone looking like you or is, are there other things that are out there like time 
and family and other things that like might hold you, you know, hold you back. So Gator Endurance actually launched a community page on their website that features now resources for minority athletes so that we can all go and, and, and find, you know, for me as an, as an athlete, one of the things that I understand as an endurance athlete, you know, you go out and ride your bike. Sometimes you ride your bike for four hours at a time. Some people got to go to a job. So, you know, that's a, that's yeah. a limitation, right? That's, that's one, that's one of the biggest limitations. And one of the things that hold people back, I mean, you can go down the line in, in, in terms of like safety, me as a black athlete being out there, I'm a black guy in all white neighborhood and I'm running at nighttime at 12 o'clock at night. No, that's not happening. I'm actually going to try to run at two o'clock. Wait a minute. I'm supposed to be at work. So, you know, between safety time, family obligations, these are all the limitations and Gatorade endurance wasn't like, all right, it's just, how do you identify someone like me? How do I also ask the community, what are the limitations so that they can provide information in terms of how to combat that? So I talked to Keontae Story and Chris Mosher and, 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 a, and, a, and a couple other people to get their perspective. Dude, like you just hit a core with me. Um, when reading the story and the results, because it, it's broken down to like safety, family obligations, and time. There's two parts of time I want to talk about, but I want to go to the safety first. Look, my audience, audience, you know, I don't really hold back too often. Uh, and this is the honey I'm talking to, so I'll probably be a little bit more candid. But even about the safety in running. So when I was in Palm Springs, the honey, in the spring, and this is perfect for the conversation purposes, I was, this very, I was one of like in the Tony areas of Palm Springs this really beautiful gated community. Um, and I got up early to go for a run. And I remember I went and I probably ran less than a block and then I stopped. And I was like a black man in this neighborhood of Palm Springs and this gated community running. And I didn't have the Lululemon gear. Like I didn't have like the fancy Nike Under Armour. You know what I mean? I had like some regular gym shorts, like a regular like t-shirt. Um, and a hat and I literally stopped running and I walked and I went back into the house and I was like I'm alone out here right and so I was like I don't know how people would feel I had that thought process and the fact that you just brought up safety in a neighborhood that really does have an impact on on our people because I was thinking about it from the gym but I don't always run at the gym I'm usually running outside and I'm only running outside in New York and it's busy areas with lots of people around, but I wasn't thinking about the neighborhoods, the suburbs where most of America existed. That's powerful, man. So let me, let me give you a, a couple quick tips and, 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 and I want people to really ingest this, right? So like, you, you have to understand, in, endurance, endurance sports help you, right? During, like 84% of people said that like, endurance sports improves your, your mental health. Right, they participate because you know you, you get encouragement from others. And so I'll, I'll I'll move that into when when you think about safety, just a couple tips. Bring people with. You. Like if we ran together, we have less likelihood of feeling the anxiety that you're talking. Right, right. That's 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 really important. Right. And another like tip that I that I always say, you know, just get your family to sort of. You, you can talk on the on the phone. Like some people run with a headset, they talk with their family, or or actually one of the um, I think Keontae Stewart is talking about. He was running a neighborhood, and he had somebody on Facetime the entire time because you want to be able to feel that that safety, right? So all these are different tips, and 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 going back to what we were talking about before in terms of prioritization and being able to kind of think about things that are um, important to you. Endurance sports are important for our overall longevity, so we have to get through these challenges, we have to find the safety, we have to find the time and we have to find the family so that we're actually able to live longer and healthier lives. We shouldn't be able to be held back by that. So that's why I love doing this work for Gatorade Endurance because you know, for those that look like me and look like you, we should be able to do everything that, that everybody have, is able to do as well. Yeah, dude, I totally agree with you. Now let's get to the time thing. So I, I love that you guys are giving tips. Um, cause now you mentioned something about, you know, you may not have the luxury of time to go on a four hour bar bike ride. You know, I picked a little bit of weight, but back in my heyday in my prime New York city, I was literally, uh, probably running like six miles, eight miles a day. And it was about like two hour time commitment from the time of like stretching, running the whole night, like two, two and a half hours. Now I'm like, I don't even have that type of time. 
what tips, as we conclude, I know you got to run, would you suggest in terms of how to think about overcoming time management? Time management has to do with uh, ultimately budgeting what you want to do. Wake up an hour earlier. Take your lunch break, not in a restaurant, but on a long walk. At nighttime, if you feel uncomfortable, bring a group of friends. You know, we all go out so we have plenty of time to spend and kick it. You know, we all go to lunch because we all want to eat. We all want to, you know, go to work, but you got to put the time in in order to see the results. These are just little things that you can do to get an extra hour or two hours, and that will make all the difference. Between this year and last year, I lost 35 pounds, and that's because all the endurance work that I've been able to do. And Gatorade Endurance is just sort of a platform which I'm able to communicate to people. We need health and wellness in order to be able to live longer and be able to live and spend time with each other. Man, Zahadi Jones, I know you have to run. I couldn't think of a better way to end that. I'm so proud of you, Nahani. It's been an honor Appreciate having it. you on, on my show for the first time. You got to come back, obviously. Uh, but I want to settle a debate really quickly that I was discussing on, a, on my previous show about the Fab Five and baggy shorts. Do you think the Fab Five is responsible for making the baggy shorts as popular as they were? Or do you think Michael Jordan was? Fab Five, absolutely. <laughs> All day, baby. I try to tell the people. Nahani Jones, I love you. Go blue. Ladies and gentlemen, Hello. check out Gatorade Endurance. Uh, check out the, the stats and the research and the data they provided. It's wildly fascinating. Uh, listen to the tips that Ahani gave you. Uh, it, it makes for really great read. Uh, until next time, folks. Peace.